Um, Finn, talk to me. Talk to me. Was it just two beers or? Uh, we just flew back after it, so yeah. Straight back after. Was, was, yeah, flew back up that night. So a um, couple of beers and after match, then that was about it. So I don't think we got to the hotel till about half twelve. So um, boys from Edinburgh and Glasgow went home, and there's just a few a few exiles left in the hotel, so quite chilled actually after. So no one, uh, no one yes. knows. <laughs> loose lip, loose lip <laughs> sync ships. <laughs> you know this is this is filmed as no, well, no, Finn. No, just no. so you know, <laughs> big smile on yeah, his face. Look at him. Yeah, uh, Captain got the cream. Um, but oh, so you're back to doing the post match functions now? Obviously with COVID, it, it, and I know that they've changed a bit of Murrayfield, haven't they? Um, <clears> now they're a little less formal. The one, yes, yeah, the first one that we've done that's been like a sit down kind of meal and and speeches and stuff. Um, in the November series, it was like, we just went up in track suits and you just kind of stand around there's a couple of speeches, but it's a lot more relaxed, less formal now. I bet that made it better for you after winning as well, third time on the bounce. <laughs> <laughs> smug as you like, can you imagine? <laughs> I mean, I've been smug and I wasn't involved in it. So, I can just imagine the old Conor McGregor arms coming out. <laughs> Mate, and just one more thing, Finn, talk to me. Talk to me about the... Uh, <laughs> The shuckers. <laughs> well, I did it. I, did it um, I think last year, maybe when we beat them at Murrayfield, I did it for a laugh. I thought, oh, I'll just do it again. Um, just a bit of fun after it, wasn't it? So, um, you know, I was at the front, and I didn't want to do the big celebration fist pump thing. So, I thought I'd do something different. Yeah, because VP's <laughs> next to you looks like such a dad, doesn't he? He's like belly's out, <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like next to him. Oh, no. Hey, people love it. The people love it. That's why the people love Finn Russell. On Rugby Pass, I don't know if you saw the uh, the one where it just focuses in on you out of everyone celebrating, and it was like, coolest man in the stadium. Yeah, I had that sent to a few times, actually, yeah. <laughs> but what was the plan, Finn, going into the game on, on how to disrupt England? Because obviously with a new coach, there probably wasn't uh, as much intel to go off as usual. Yeah, so we tried to kind of watch them more individually. So me and the centre did a bit of work in... Like Marcus Farrell marching, or if Manu was going to play, did a bit of like more individual analysis. Um, we looked back at the Lins- Leicester Sanderson's final last year, how much they kicked it. So we actually spoke a lot about just staying in the kicking battles, but for the backs, it was more finding their individuals how they defend um, instead of trying to look at the defensive setups and how the defence is going to be. Like we could look at, Le- at Leicester and how they defend, obviously, with their defence coach going in. But then with Marcus and marching at 10 and 13, it might have more been a bit like um, a bit like Harlequin's defence where we weren't, weren't really too sure. So it was quite hard to prep for it, actually. But um, we sort of focused on ourselves and then looked at them individually rather than as a, a collective team. Were you surprised they started Farron and Smith at, at 10 and 12? Well, we heard three weeks it was going to be Faz at 10 and then when they got a couple of injuries, I think, we then started hearing that Manu wasn't going to play and it was going to be Marcus and Faz. Um, so we weren't really sure what team to expect, but then, like I said, we got a few injuries, so we were sort of narrowed it down a little bit. But um, yeah, it was like I said, it was kind of kind of tough to prep, not knowing what the squad was going to be, how they were going to try and play, and who they were going to pick. So um, it was an interesting kind of week's build up. We were chatting about it earlier. Do you reckon they were trying to target you a little bit? A little bit, I think. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what made you think that? <laughs> Just a couple of shots after the ball, maybe, or a bit of pressure on me. But no, it was fair. As a 10, it's normal that like, teams are going to try and put you under pressure. Um, I think one that put Hugh Jones through it on, Faz kind of came out the line to get me. Um, and then, like, I don't know, 10 minutes later, he banged me one of them. So, um, nah, it doesn't really bother me if teams do that. It kind of opens up space elsewhere, like we saw when Shuggy went through and stuff. So, if someone sells themselves so so much like that so early, that it's easy to then play around them. You say it doesn't bother you, though, but you had it. You, <laughs> there's obviously a clip doing the rounds, me old mate. And, uh, of, of you maybe having a little whisper in the old ear on the way after Dewey's yeah. try. So talk to us. Come on. Max has already given us his version <laughs> of what you said in a Scottish accent. <laughs> and hold on, hold on. How did he go, Max? Like, How'd you like them apples, big man? <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't his shit house. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, hey, shit hey. house. Shit yeah. house. Shit house. Shit house. <laughs> no, it was because Faz had just banged me before that and I lost the ball. Then they kicked it long when I was in the ground. I think I thought it was Faz, but I think it was actually Marcus and Martin that were like mouthing off to me in the ground. But then as soon as Duan went through, I was like, I saw Faz, I went straight for him because I'm a mouthful back. Um, and then Marcus <laughs> after it. So. And what was um, the match? There wasn't actually you? anything that much. I just kind of said like what you say now kind of thing and <laughs> anything else to say because obviously we were mouthing off me and Duan just ran it in from 60. So. 
wasn't that much. But did um, you say anything back? But well, Faz just said like he was. I didn't say anything. Like, what you on about, kind of thing? Because you know, I don't think it was actually him. <laughs> <laughs> um, so after the game, I was like, yes, yeah, so that was a bit of script chat. <laughs> I, I didn't know it was I thought I you know I had my face kind of almost in the ground, so I thought it was him, or I assumed it was him, but I don't think it actually was. Yeah, because you do the classic Finn Russell reaction, like just and and I often take up this technique, just laugh, just laugh at them, and it makes people wow. more angry, doesn't it? And I could see you getting up from that tackle, just laughing, and some people look yeah. at you and go, oh, he obviously doesn't care, but that's the best way to react to stuff like that. <clears throat> Yeah, I find it all quite not not funny, but like if they're trying to take me out, then obviously you're under their skin a little bit. Um or they're obviously focusing so much on you that there's other, other options around them. Um so I can yeah, I sort of laugh about it. It's just how it is. Um I don't mind it at all if they try and put me under pressure or hit me off the ball or try and get into me like that. I find it quite funny and I'm happy enough to give it back out as well. Finn, what I've watched it a few times. Actually, when you first start chirpsing back, Duan hasn't scored yet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> So what was your thinking at the time? Well, I just saw him make the break and then I thought I'm just going to go and have a, have a mouth off back to Farrell. If we did get tackled, then I was still running towards where we are going to play the next day. So. <laughs> Not very far. <laughs> Couple of shoulder barges on the way there. <laughs> yeah, you imagine he hadn't gone over. I had confidence in Duane, you know. Yeah. I'll say that, but... Um, but I could just say, yeah, but just at the time I just thought I was mouth off to him and then, like I say, like, when I was running, it was kind of... If he was to get tackled at the end, I could have still be in a position to play off it. So um, it would have been all right, I think. That shot on you from Faz, was it a high tackle from your point of view? Uh, no, I wouldn't say so. Um, I thought it was right. It was kind of uh, like my upper army hit, I think. It wasn't a high shot. It was a good shot, to be honest. Um, I was kind of looking at pass and then Hoggy was saying to kick it through. So um, I was kind of in two minds and he just caught me. So it was a good defence for him, to be fair. Finn's like, not like Sexton. He won't milk it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> You see Sexton milking that one at the weekend, lying on the floor like, that. oh, I shot Liam Williams. Was it Liam Williams? Yeah, and he got he got a yellow card, didn't he, Liam Williams? And it was never a high yeah. shot, but it was because Sexton was milking it. Do you think people are milking stuff more in rugby at the moment, Finn? Um, probably. There's just such an emphasis around, obviously, high tackles just now that anything around like upper chest and head, neck kind of area, if you go down, the ref's going to have to look at it on the TMO, so... You know, in a test match or in a game, if you can get someone yellow carded off a tackle like that, it's a big advantage. Mm. Um, so it might not actually be because they're injured, and obviously it's more just to get the ref to have a look at it. Finn, if you happen to be Steve Borthwick in a separate life, what would you be picking as your sort of 10, 12, 13 combo? We thought they were maybe going to go Marcus and Faz with two Lange, so two Lange can get them to go forward, and they're going to have two ball players to play with, um, and two kicking options because they kick it a lot. Um, but when they had March, they almost like they've got strike runners, but not as as much as if they had Manu out there. So um, it allowed us to maybe stop them a bit more front first phase to then not stop their attack, but then they probably just didn't get the ball they wanted. So I I, I don't know the players that well to like, play alongside them, so it's hard to say what I would go with. And again, depending who do they play, Italy this week, it might be better going to Marcus this week for a bit of X factor. But then looking at how Italy played, it could also be better to go with Farrell to maybe control the game a little bit better. And then Marcus coming on later on to, to when, when it's a bit more open and the Italians are maybe a bit bit more tired. So um like I said, I don't know the English players that well personally, so it's hard to say what's what the best option is. But I think it was hard for them first game because they had a few injuries, obviously. Um, a couple of centres went down. Um so it's probably tough for them to, to decide. 